Today on the Mr. Maple Show podcast, Matt and Tim count down the top 20 most anticipated maples coming to Mr. Maple in 2024. y'all and welcome to the mr maple show we got a hot one for you today these are some of the top picks that we're going to be re-releasing in 2024 hey y'all i'm tim this is my brother matt we're mr maple.com a mail order business that ships directly to your door so check us out on mr maple.com you know if you're watching this on youtube these do air on youtube's uh, on youtube's <laughs> they do air on youtube at 8 p.m on sundays uh and follow us there as well Give us a subscribe, smash that like button, and give us a five-star rating on your favorite podcast platform. We'd really appreciate it. Today's the top 20 most anticipated releases of 2024. Now, how we based this was a little bit on customer signups. So we have that notify me when it's back in stock. So all these items have been getting hit in that notify me. Uh, some of these we haven't offered yet. So some of them are just off the chains on the hype train. So some of these have went on that hype train. You can imagine this list. Uh, these are trees we anticipate to offer in 2024 that we think will be the most hyped up Japanese maples of 2024. Um, I think these are some that people have been waiting for for a long time. Some of these are classics that are returning. Um, all these have a great deal of anticipation behind them. That's really what it boils down to. These trees are highly anticipated, and we anticipate the return. You know, granted, there can always be uh, other circumstances like a, a poor production yield or something gets damaged or something like that that slows down our production level. The classic story is that Red Panda, somebody actually hit the original one with a weed eater, which put us back a single year, at least on production value for that one. Uh, so things can slow these down, but we anticipate every one of these 20 trees to list in this year, in 2024. And guys, there's some hype behind these. These are some trees that you guys have been waiting on. There are some trees that we get notified about daily. I mean, several of these you'll know. Several of these you may not know that much about yet but they're they're either returning or premiering for the very first time in 2024. So y'all, coming in number 20, we've got Acer Olive Rainum Hot Tamale. You know the Heat Seeker series always highly anticipated. We did a really good job in 2023 of getting Hot Blonde out there. Uh, hot Blonde, uh, you know, we, we sold a lot of Hot Blondes. In fact, it was on our our top sales list of the year. Uh, I don't think we had as many Hot Tamales, so a lot of people are still waiting on that one. Hot Tamale, excellent selection by Masayoshi Yano there at World Maple Park. Uh, Yano-san, uh, when he was alive, he told us that he wanted us to put a name on this one if we got into the trade. So we actually were honored to be able to put a name on this cultivar, get it out there under the name Hot Tamale. Now, Hot Tamale is an Acer Livianum X Palmatum with some exceptional heat tolerant qualities. But why this one's so popular is that pink spring splash. Like this one really puts on a nice display of pink which kind of gets replaced by really a more mauved evergreen kind of green color. It's a little bit darker than what you expect most, kind of an olivey color. And then that pink new growth over top that really puts on a nice summer display as well. Now, hot tamale is exceptionally heat tolerant. I've had customers growing this in Texas in full sun in containers in places I didn't think anything could survive. <laughs> and hot tamale thrived and did well, and it surprised even me on its heat tolerance. This is an exceptionally heat tolerant Japanese maple selection by Masayoshi Ano. The code name had Nakahara in there, and that's because Nakahara is one of the hotter regions in Japan. And he was basically indicating with the code name on this one that this tree did very well in hot regions. And it's perfect for those hotter spots in the south. Acer olive rainums are closely related to Acer palmatums. We really like them because they add that extra heat tolerance with that Japanese maple style. That gives a Japanese maple that has an extra superpower to go in the hotter climates in the South. 
All right, y'all, coming in here at number 19, we got another Billy Schwartz introduction, this one being Judy Girl Broom. Now, you guys sold us out of this one quick in 2023. It probably would have been higher up on our list for sales of the year if we had a big set of them. I think 50 of them went in a matter of minutes. I mean, not even an hour they were selling out on our website. Very popular tree. Judy Girl Broom, uh, Billy Schwartz says this may be the best broom he's ever introduced, and I think that alone kind of helped build the hype on this one. Excellent, durable Great color, small, compact shape, uh, and just an excellent new broom. Now, I think part of this may be because Judy is named after his girlfriend, and Judy Girl Broom is named after his girlfriend, Judy. Uh, they came to visit here not long ago, and Judy's such a sweet woman. I really enjoyed going grabbing breakfast with her and talking. Uh, an amazing, amazing lady, but I do think part of the reason why he loves this tree so much is because it's named after his current girlfriend, but Judy is an amazing plant. I mean, this really is a broom that's unique and special. Matt and I got to go visit this original broom in Pennsylvania one time on one of our trips with uh, Billy Schwartz. And it's just on this really old, massive Azure Palmatum. And it was up near the power lines. And it's just this massive broom that was just like this, this beach ball up there in the tree. You know, it was probably 15, 20 feet up in the air, but it was outstanding. And the thing I really like about this leaf is it has a little more rounded leaf than many of your typical other witch's brooms that have, you know, a little more elongated foliage. Excellent plant. Uh, I really like it. Uh, we're actually thinking about working on a book. Uh, Billy just recently called me to wish me a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. I told him all about the Buckholz purchase, and he was screaming happy. He couldn't, couldn't even believe it. Uh, so fun, fun to, you know, share information like that with your mentors. Billy, such a cool guy. He He's wanting us to work on a book on Witch's Brooms with him. That may be something we pursue this spring. Uh, he's coming to visit again this spring, and uh, we're sending him some cool plants right now as well. But Judy Girl Broom, guys, it's a hitter. I mean, everybody loved it. Uh, it hit the market. You know, Talon Buckholz sometimes says, we'll let the market decide when he releases a tree. Well, the market liked Judy Girl Broom. That one, that one, people hit that one out the park right out the gate. Everybody responded well to it, and uh, yeah, we're going to be doing more of that in 2024. And it is a slow grower compact habit, as most witches' brooms are. Fits in a lot of small spaces. An awesome selection. Coming in at number 18, we've got Acer Oliverinum Hot Sauce. Yeah, another Acer Oliverinum. Just like that hot tamale, this one had that Nakahara Benny code name on it. This one was Nakahara Benny A, hot tamale being Nakahara Benny B. Yano Sun said... Feel free to produce these, but I don't want that being the name you release them under. Make sure to give it a name. We sent him hot tamale and hot sauce. He said he loved it, so it was nice to get his blessing on that. Hot sauce may be one of the best heat tolerant reds of all time. I like it because it gives you everything you're looking for in like a blood good style, but it has the Acer Oliver Random genetics in there, making it more heat tolerant. So it really is the quintessential red upright Japanese maple that many people should be growing in the hotter parts of the South. Now, we've had the trifecta on the, the the Heat Seeker series. You know, we have the Heat Seeker trademark series here at Mr. Maple. So far, the ones that have been released are Hot Blonde, Hot Tamale, and Hot Sauce. Hot Tamale and Hot Sauce in a little bit smaller numbers than our own Hot Blonde. Uh, hot, t- hot Blonde tends to be the fastest growing, followed by Hot Tamale. And Hot Sauce tends to be a little slower, more in that fire glow kind of shape and range. But exceptional heat tolerance. This one is durable as they come for that deep south. You know, it may be one of the greatest reds ever released, but when it's all said and done, that, that Acer Livierinum influence may make this one, you know, one of the most bulletproof reds you can possibly be after. I believe this was the tree that there were so many rumors of people seeing this tree in Japan at Masayoshi Yano's, and they would say, do you know there's a red Acer Olive Rainum out there? And, you know, we had to track this thing down because, I mean, having that superpower of being Acer Olive Rainum and combining that red color that holds fairly well throughout the season is a unique trait that you don't find in Acer Olive Rainum. And it's just such a great tree to use out in the landscape. I mean, Olive Rainum is one of our favorite trees. That's why we love the Heat Seeker series. But Hot Sauce itself, having that good red color, makes this a quintessential red upright for people in extremely hot climates. Okay, y'all, coming in here at number 17 on our highly anticipated 2024 list, We've got Purple Curl. Now, this is a Talon Buckholz introduction that we've offered here before at Mr. Maple, but everybody signed up for this one to come back. 
Love it or hate it, this one is a collector's dream. I know Andy Andy hates this one. Some people hate this one. Some people love it. It's one of those plants I joke that it's a plant only a collector could love. You know, a face only a mother could love. Well, this one's weird. It, it's unique. It's different. It has irregular folds to it. It kind of contorts. And I mean, I think if this was your first Japanese maple and you were looking for a blood good, it would it would shock somebody to their core. You know, it might not be for everybody, but the collectors absolutely adore purple curl. Now, purple curl is one of those Japanese maple weirdos. It has contorted foliage. It has purple-like foliage that is like a malting color towards the inside with lighter shades of red, almost reticulated, but it's not really. I mean, it is such a unique and weird Japanese maple. And it doesn't have your traditional, you know, just straight upright habit either, though it can grow in different directions. It is a lovely plant that is outstanding because it is unique and special. And this is a tree you're going to love if you're a collector because it stands out. And this truly is one of those weird plants that will just rock it out there in the garden. Uh, everyone's going to say, what in the world is that thing? And some people may say, hey, it looks a little sickly, but it's, it's not it's what it's supposed to do. Yeah, it, it, has, it has this weird malting that is outstanding. It's an odd one. It is an odd bird. It throws a lot of people off. It, it's extremely unique. Um, it, it's out there as far as like how weird a maple can get. Cause I mean, the foliage is irregular. The growth is irregular. It kind of starts out looking more purple. And then you get these bronzing malting contortions within the leaf, like yellow and lime green. Yeah. It looks so weird. I mean, it's funky to say the least. It's an irregular growth pattern. Uh, it, it, it's just out there. And, and it's one that I think the collectors couldn't get enough of. People love this one. We first offered it, I think in 2022 and people snatched it up. Well, it's coming back in 2024 in higher numbers. Uh, it's something we're going to continue to offer. And just a great plant. It's one that a lot of people are signed up to be notified when it gets back in stock, for sure. So coming at number 16, and our most anticipated releases of 2024, we've got Angel the Prince. Now, not a lot of people know this one, but this one was actually found by Joel Johnson, our new director of Buckholz Nursery. This was a, a seedling he found, liked it. We throw it in that Makawa category, but it's a weirdo. It's it's not really, I mean, it's, it's in between Taro Yama and Makawa. It's kind of got a little thing I like about both. The foliage reminds me a lot of Kurenajishi, kind of has that contorted elongation to it. It's a weird one, but it's very nice. The colors are great. I mean, you kind of get that purplish border to it in the early spring with that green yellowish eye fading to more of a green kind of getting more of that olive type color. It's been an exceptional plant for us. The, the market's really responded to this one too. So if people have really enjoyed this one, they sell it out very quickly. When it gets listed on our website, it doesn't last long. And a lot of people are signed up to get notified as soon as this one gets back. Now this one had, it, we categorize this in that Shishigashira type family, that Makaba type family, but it really does have foliage and a habit almost similar to like a Kurenajishi, but with different colors to it. So it really has that little bit larger foliage, twisted, contorted. I mean, somewhere in between that and the Makawi Etsabusa and the way this thing grows, upright, dense, and like that, that spring border is just outstanding on Angel the Prince. I think Brian really captured it this past spring. And so we've got some great photos on MrMaple.com. Many of y'all, if you're not familiar with our website, you can always go to MrMaple.com click on about maples, click on the maple files, the Mr. Maple files, and go in there and see all of our trees that we've listed on mrmaple.com, whether they're in stock or out of stock. And you can look through all the photos, a great resource for y'all on learning about trees, especially all the huge selection we've offered here at Mr. Maple. There's a huge archive of information there, and you can always set up to get notified via email. Now, any of these trees in 2024 are likely coming back in decent numbers, so they'll probably hit tenant tens. So most of the most anticipated we're talking about here are going to show up on those tenant tens on either Tuesdays or Thursdays, so be ready for those. Make sure you sign up for those emails. Some exceptional plants, though. I mean, some that sell out fairly quickly, in here at number 15, we've got Acer Palmatum Snow Kitten. You've seen this one sold as Yama Yuki, Yuki Yama, uh, Makawa Nishiki, Elmer <laughs> Snow Kitten. No matter what you want to call this one, it tends to sell out quickly. Uh, we do have a big sign-up list for this one hitting the uh, website again. And we have great production going on on this one at our Buckholz Farm as well. I remember we had some of these in boxes at the Mr. Maple Festival, one of our fall festivals. And people were lined up at the gate and people started running from the gate to go grab boxes. You guys got me in trouble. I, the, the, the police officers were like, hey, there's too many cars left in the road. We had like 150 cars outside. And people just got out of their cars and sprinted to the snow kittens. Like, left the cars in the road, many of them. Next year, we're going to say you have to have a number. So you're going to have to actually get park your car 
and then you could run up and race everybody. But you got to come in and park. I got in trouble with the police officers because there were like literally 50 abandoned cars in the road where people just got out of their car and sprinted. So no more of that. We're going to we're gonna make you come in and get a number next year. There was a little bit of fight going on amongst a few people. There were some tears. It was it was heated. I, we don't want to create... We want it to be as easy as possible. And we're, we're working hard on getting this tree in good production here at Mr. Maple. There's a lot of people waiting on it. The hype is real among the Snow Kitten. We do have it, some big boys who brought in from the Buckholz nursery. There, and, those were some nice ones in the boxes. And Snow Kitten is a more finicky plant, so we always let people know that. You don't want to overwater it. It's a great container plant if you've got good drainage. Uh, but this is a plant that you don't want to over fertilize and not prune anything on because then it will get a little greener. The more you prune on this tree and promote more variegation, the more showy this plant is. So a lot of nurseries have some amazing plants because we're grafting the hound out of them. So we're always trimming off of them. So keep that in mind. If yours isn't starting to show variegation, give it a light pruning, especially in that late winter time frame. And you're going to promote more variegation when it flushes out. I think part of what the hype was about with this one is we really didn't gouge anybody on this one. We did have some prices on these that were up there, uh, you know, in the 100 to 150 range for these. They were a far better deal than anyone I've ever seen offer these before. I've seen smaller ones offered for 100. I've seen, you know, ones that don't even compare to the size of these offered for 450. I mean, people have really kind of put a price ticket on this one. Well, our goal at Mr. Maple is always to make things available and to make them available at a reasonable price. So I think part of the hype on this one was we had one of the best values on Yamayuki or Snow Kitten that's been out there yet. So coming in at number 14, we've got a newer introduction by Talon Buckholtz himself. We've got Acer Pomatum Marmalade. Ah, this one's cool. It's a crazy, I mean, Marmalade describes it well, but it's a crazy orange in the early spring. Talon sent me one as a gift last year. So my first one ever was last spring. He just sent it as a gift. Now, you know, we ended up buying buckles in our street, so we got a lot more of them. So we're going to be able to make it available. Uh, my first one, though, was last spring, and the colors in the springtime were exceptional. He sent us a two-gallon, and it wasn't in leaf, and it leafed out with us, and I was just blown away at the shades of orange this one hits. Um, it's going to be popular for bonsai. It's going to be popular for container garden. But people are going to love putting this one out in their landscape and pairing it with so many other spring splashes like Wayno Yama, like DeSojo. It's just going to add a whole new piece there to the landscape of kind of that crazy bright orange you can get in the early spring. I mean, this tree almost made our top five most outrageous plants at Buckholz list. It came real close to getting there, but... You know, it probably was like number six or number seven. We did do six, so it hit it, it hit at number seven. It hit at number seven and didn't quite make the list. But this tree is outstanding. I mean, it is outrageous on its its colors. It's not really been released that much retail yet. It's not really out there. And I'm excited to be able to be able to release it first here on MrMaple.com. You can go sign up on any tree that's sold out on our website. You can click Notify Me and plug in your email address to be notified when this tree does become available. It's likely it's going to be available first through our tenant tens on mrmaple.com. Marmalade, I saw it this spring at Buckholtz Farm in June when we went to go visit before we were actually realized we were even purchasing Buckholtz and it got my heart a pumping. Marmalade, it has an outrageous spring color and that outrageous spring color is just a bright orange. Then you get some yellows in there with orange new growth over top. It's an outrageous tree you're going to have to have in your garden. Sounds delicious. All right, coming in here at number 13, we've got an oldie but a goodie. I don't ain't that oldie. It's, it's kind of been around about three or four years at Mr. Maple. But dang, are you guys signed up to be notified when this one hits again. We've got Acer Palmatum Koi. That doesn't sound delicious. That does not sound delicious, <laughs> unless you're a stork. All right, don't be eating our Koi stork. Koi's are amazing. Uh, this one is my favorite fall color Makawa type. I get the best fall color on this one of any of our Makawa types we have. I mean, fiery orangey reds with just a ton of orange going on. Now, Koi gets some mauve colors and a lot of sun, but you can also get some orange new growth growing on on top of that. Uh, just a beautiful tree. It really continues to change. Uh, you know, Tim and I started out doing a lot of Koi shows. We, we used to go do a lot of garden shows every year. We ended up doing 30 garden shows a year. And one of the things we did were a lot of Koi society shows. So I have a, a large appreciation for Koi really just enjoying what they do. You know, we went all the way up to Kadama Koi Farm for their grand opening uh, in New Jersey, and Tim and I were just in awe, one, at some of the prices some of these Koi get, but also just in, just at how wonderful and interesting they were. And then one of the things I really appreciate about the Koi is it came in all different colors. I mean, it was kind of like the same kind of thing, reason we appreciate Japanese maples. And Koi itself can give you some unique colors through each, to, each part of the season. Sometimes it can give you a bronze, but... 
it is one of the most outstanding fall color Makawa types of them all. It's, it is a Makawa type. That means it is one of those trees that's harder to get in production. Now, the reason the Makawa types are harder to produce is because there's tight intervals in between the buds on the plants. That's, that makes it a, a true little dwarf. That also means we've got smaller spaces to graft. That yield goes down when you graft the Makawa types, and there's not a lot of wood produced each and every year. And that makes many of these Makawa types harder to get into production. And so we have to work really hard, extra hard, in getting these Makawa types out there like Koi because they're outstanding trees. They stand out. Everyone loves the Makawa types. And Koi, it's one of those newer selections. So we've really had to work extra hard in getting the sign wood out there to really get this tree in production. But every time we release it, this tree just sells out fast. Oh, it's an excellent plant. Great for the container garden. I think it adds a lot to what... Makawi Atsabusa can do. Um, I, I like it in all of its color iterations, but I would say one of the most interesting is late summer when it has greener, older growth and orangey new growth. That's really when it stood out to us and kind of had kind of a, a show a look to it. Like it had that uh, bright koi orange going on. It just really seemed interesting and it really just added something to it. Also, that fall color can't be understated. The fall color really sta- makes this one stand apart. And every year I've had this one in the ground, the fall color has pretty much exceeded all the other Makawa types. I mean, people walk up and they go, what is that? And the fall color is exceptional. So coming in at number 12, we've got one of our introductions from the Area 51 collection at Mr. Maple. We've got Acer Palmatum Cashmere. Cue the Led Zeppelin. Uh, Sean and I were at the uh, Christmas Jam this year. We got to hear some Led Zeppelin going on uh, you know, with the cover band, but <laughs> it was still fun. Uh, Cashmere, one of my favorite Zeppelin songs. Got to play some Cashmere. We were grafting, and I was grafting this type. It's kind of a Kotonoito type. Uh, we consider it a little bit more durable fairy hair, but one of the more interesting things about Cashmere is it gets a ruffled curl to the foliage sometimes, too, so you get this little weird curl going on. Really just an interesting, dainty, delicate-looking tree that's durable as all get out, so it has that dainty, delicate look to it. And just kind of remind us of cashmere. I mean, fairy hair is the most uh, thin leaf linear lobum. Cochinoito is next. Where cashmere falls is actually in between. And with that extra twist to it, this is an amazing tree. We sent it years ago to Talon Buckholz for him to evaluate. And he got this tree in production. So I'm excited that we're going to actually be able to really have some good numbers on this going forward. This is such a cool plant because it gives you everything you love about the Cochinoito sort of fairy hair type look. But like Matt said, it twists. And so it just gives a little bit of extra rock and roll in there. This is a plant that I think people are going to fall in love with. And when we release this tree, it's, it's going to be gone. Excellent plant. Um, you know, we, we have classic rock fans. So whenever we can, we throw some cool names in there too from that. I'm still waiting to get a Black Dog Stewardia from Europe just because it's got Black Dog in the name. Uh, cashmere, though, really just a cool, fun plant. I mean, this one looks good in the container garden. It looks good in the ground. It's got a little extra ruffle going on to it. Great yellows to orange fall color. Really just adds a little something extra in every single season. I love how delicate it looks, but it, it definitely is a more durable plant. I've been real impressed with its durability. It's been vigorous for us. Yeah, and the overall appearance of it's just been excellent. Coming in at number 11, this is one that we've released a lot on Mr. Maple, but every time we release it, it drops and it just sells out fast. We've got Acer Palmatum Firefly. So this one had to be on our list because uh, it's been super popular and so many people are signed up to get notified when it's back in stock. I was surprised to see this one for as little amount of time as it was on our website in our top 50 sales for 2023. It's like one of those things, it's like it was like up leading the league in scoring with the least amount of shots, right? So its efficiency was high. It wasn't on the website long, but whenever it hits the website, it sells out. People keep sharing photos of this in our group, Mr. Maple Friends on Facebook. People see this when they get they get excited about it, and then when it returns, it, it goes quick. I think the biggest thing about Firefly that makes it so popular is how it constantly changes throughout the seasons. It's always putting on a show. It's always got pink and almost white reticulation in there with green veins, but it changes throughout the season, and the intensity that Firefly is variegated is one of the most intense of any of those reticulated styles. It has a really not, really nice upright form. Its original name was Moonfire until we told the guy who found it and said, you know, Moonfire is another tree that's been in the nursery trade for quite a while. There's already a tree by that name. And he said, well, what's a good name for it? And we said, how about Firefly? And 
we hit it, hit the market with Firefly and people fell in love with this tree. I'm glad it wasn't released under the name Moonfire by somebody else because that would have just been a bad situation where you have Moonfire Part 1, Moonfire Part 2. Do you have the really cool looking Moonfire that does like this and this and this? And then the other Moonfire that's still a really good red upright. It's right, right. really confusing. But Firefly is an outstanding tree that is just... It's, it just rocks it out in the garden. One we're also finding as this one matures, it's very narrow. So a lot of that branching is arched up. It's very different than many of the ghost series that have almost a pendulous nature to them. This one's very narrow for its approach. Uh, at six to eight foot, you're not looking at a tree that's more than like four to five feet wide. Very, very nice shape to it. The All the branching kind of has a street tree-ish form to it. So it's all arched upward. Uh, just an exceptional plant. Firefly brings it. The color changes every single season. So it's something that it's a photographer's dream for the garden because it's constantly looking different. Now, coming in at number 10, we've got Acer Palmatum Mystic Makawa. You guys know we're always up in production on this one. It's one uh, that's been selling out at Mr. Maple for gosh, a long time, probably seven or eight years now. This one's been a hitter, maybe even 10 years. It's been a hitter for a while on Mr. Maple, uh, but it's still on our list of anticipated ones. Uh, people bid this one up too high. I've seen it on eBay going for $250 to one gallon. They're like smaller than our, our one gallons. You know, we keep grafting it. We keep producing it. We keep making it easier to get. Um, and as we do that, the price on some of these go down. They get easier to get. They're not as hard to sell out. This is one that frustrates a lot of people because when it hits a 10 at 10, you know, we might have a set of 75 of these which takes us a year and a half to get, you know, just into production from liner stage. So just the point from where they're grafted, I mean, it's, it can take two to three years to even get these into production. You know, you're easily talking two years from the liner to the one gallon until these are ready. And th those may sell out in four minutes. I mean, I've seen them sell out by 10 02. Uh, so they, they can be quite popular. It's one that's often signed up for. So it's going to make this list because a lot of people are waiting on mystic Makawa to come back. They know that Mr. Maple's going to give them a good quality plant without gouging them too badly on that price. We try to keep the price very reasonable. I mean, I've seen these selling for wholesale more than we sell them at retail. So I, we always try to keep it very, very reasonable in what we do. I've seen people selling these for $75 wholesale. Now, mystic Makawa Leaves out in the spring with a bright orange color. It's one of the best orange of the Makawa types. It was a selection by our friend Crispin Silva, and it is outstanding. We fell in love with this tree, and Matt and I even had a competitor to it early on called Oompa Loompa. Yeah, we had and, an orange Makawa. It was almost identical, to be honest with you. And Matt and I, when we put a tree out into the nursery trade, we wanted it to be unique and different. Well, Missy Makawa beat us to the punch, and so we didn't really introduce Oompa Loompa into the nursery trade because... It was already the exact same plant. It didn't need two plants that were almost identical in form and color with two different names. So we just X'd Oompa Loompa. Even though it was a fun name, it was kind of goofy to have Oompa Loompa out there. Uh, we ended up just discontinuing it because Missy Makawa, you know, it was already out there. And Mr. Makawa is an outstanding plant. It is a little bit slower growing than your typical Makawa Yatsubusa. Being one of the slowest of the Makawa family, it adds a unique color of orange in the springtime that will grab people's attention. And the Makawa family are really special plants. They have a lively feel to them because they have tightly layering between each of those nodes we talked about earlier. They're difficult to produce, but they look really cool. And Mystic Makawa does that with that extra flare orange. Now, I'll recommend some morning sun, at least on this one. You don't want an all-day shade for its best colors. I find it tends to be better colored in the ground than also in the container. So the ground tends to give you your best coloration on this one. Maybe it has something to do with how slow it's leafing out or something like that. I don't know. I've always been interested to see if pH affects Makawa seedling colors. This one, if it's in the ground and you're getting at least four hours of early morning sun, you're going to get your best colors. So coming in at number nine. We've got Acer Oliveranum Hot Rod. Yeah, now this one can be called Acer Cerulotum Hot Rod. Sometimes people list it as Acer Oliveranum subspecies Formasonum Hot Rod. This one is going to be a 7 through 9 plant, so it's a little tricky even for us here in Zone 6. This is a Taiwanese maple that has some incredible yellow bark. This is basically, basically an Acer Oliveranum, so it's got that crazy heat tolerance of Oliveranum subspecies Formasonum. Those things are durable as all get out. They're not quite as cold tolerant as straight species Acer Oliviernum. So your, your hot blondes, your hot tamales, your hot sauces, those are a little bit more cold tolerant than this species. But man, is it heat tolerant. Now, basically what this one brings is that Behoo-like quality to an Acer Oliviernum. You're going to get the heat tolerance of Acer Oliviernum subspecies Formosanum, a bark like a Behoo. I have had the tree leaf out 
hot rod leaf out with a bold orange hue over all the leaves too, which looks crazy with that yellow bark. So you can really have your midlife crisis with a hot blonde in your garden and a hot rod. <laughs> <laughs> right. Got a hot rod in the driveway right now. Uh, yeah, it's a great plant though. We, we love it as part of that Heat Seeker series. We always want to let people know this is the one that's a little different being Surrey Lottom. It is a little bit more zone seven through nine. People in Texas are going to love this plant. It is going to be heat tolerant, you know, winter interest. You've got that bright yellow stemming going on in the winter months, durable for heat, durable for sun. It's going to soak up the heat. In fact, the hotter climates, this tree is going to grow faster. Hot Rod is not listed on our website yet, but it's highly anticipated. This is one that a lot of people have been waiting for, and it's going to be a big hit in some of those hotter regions. I first saw the selection in Taiwanese Facebook groups on Facebook about Japanese maples, and it blew my mind because it was yellow bark, and it was a Acer olivarinum formosanum. And I was just like, what in the world? This thing is crazy. And it has been. I mean, ever since we started growing it, it's been insane. Uh, I'm excited to put it in our Heat Seeker series. It didn't really have a cultivar name on it before. Um, and so we're excited to be able to put a name on it with Hot Rod. Yeah, this is a, an exceptional heat tolerant tree, bright yellow stemming. Again, you know, one of our first coral barks of another species. There's coral barks in Cercinatums, there's coral barks in Palmatum and snake bark, but that's about it. It gets pretty limited if you want a true bark interest maple. Uh, this one being an Acer Surrey with insane yellow bark. You know, yellow is even more rare. I mean, how many how many yellow bark maples are there in the whole world of maples? Not many. Hot Rod brings it. Exceptional yellow bark going on. And I, I really like that spring interest. I mean, that spring can get bronzy orange with yellow bark. That's just so funky. It's, it's kind of a cool looking plant. You definitely want to give this one good drainage. Uh, we graft them onto Palmatum, so they're very closely related to Japanese maples. And just an excellent addition to the Heat Seeker series coming here first in 2024. Coming in at number eight, we've got Acer Palmatum El Tigre. Man, everybody's after this one. We we released this one for the first time in 2023. We kind of shock dropped it. We didn't really hype the tree up. We didn't really tell people about it. I mean, I might have sent <laughs> I might have sent one picture out ever before it actually hit the market. And I mean, it it was gone quick. El Tigre is a fun variegated macaw. Anytime we have a variegated macaw, it's a boost. So those are going to be popular. El Tigre, it is so funky, especially in the early spring. I love in the early spring that the foliage kind of cups down when they're leafing out. I mean, me and Brian Sean right there looking at those things last spring, we're like, it looks like a cactus. Like, it looks so weird. Like, it looks so weird. It didn't look like any of the other palmatums leafing out because all the foliage was tied up against it and just aimed down, especially as they were starting to unfurl, which made it even cooler on a Makawi Yatsubusa form. And as this tree progresses into the summer, the variegation becomes more prominent of a lime green on dark green foliage. With that tightly layering Makawa yet to boost a habit, this tree, it just rocks it. I mean, it's really like a relish X. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was gonna say. Makawa. Like Makawa relish. If you're familiar with relish at all, we've offered that a few times. There's not many trees that have that style of variegation. Like it's so different than Catalina Yetsabusa or Kryptonite or any of the other variegated forms. It's weird. It, it's just an odd look to it. But I like how how cups down all the foliage. I mean, it looked like a bird or something out there. It looked really weird. Like, like we kept calling it a cactus or a bird, but it just looked more animated than most of the other types of leafing it ha- out. It has a unique way of leafing out, but the thing I like about it is is the summer variegation is, at, is one of its peaks. I mean, that is when the variegation shows off the best is midsummer, which is unusual because many plants show off in the spring, and this one does in a unique way with the way the foliage cups, but when this thing really rocks it out, is that midsummer interest, and it is a rock star out there. I mean, it is a new tree that hit the market for the first time last year. It sold out immediately. And uh, I think this tree has got a long way to go. I think people are going to, the more they people realize this name and say El Tigre, the more people are going to want this tree for their garden. It's the Tiger King. All right, coming in here at number seven, we got Acer Palmetto Mayday. Now, you know it's a hot list when Mayday's at number seven on the most anticipated. A couple years ago when Talon was retiring, um, and he's, which he's not now, he's still working at Buckles Nursery, but when he was anticipating retiring, you know, he'd kind of downsized some of his Mayday production. He made a lot of his stock plants available, and we snatched them all up here at Mr. Maple, so we got most of his Mayday. And because of that, it, the, the market kind of dried up on him, and we kept producing them here at Mr. Maple uh, every chance we get. 
uh, but they, they weren't out there as much. You didn't see them at all the other places, and so everybody was calling us asking for Mayday. We're getting Mayday back into as big a production as possible, and that's one of the beauties of having you know, Buckholtz Nursery now is that we can really up the numbers in some of these. Mayday's one that it hits the website and it's gone. It, it just absolutely does. We, we've been continuing to increase the numbers on this one. There have been times we've dropped 150 Mayday. You know, they didn't make it five minutes. And we try to do our best to produce as many as we can. I mean, our goal is to produce as many as we can to make these trees as easy for you to get as possible. But unfortunately, the way these things work is these are the most anticipated trees. Well, it, you know, everybody's with, after them. With what we do, it's not any harder to produce this than Makawa. And Makawa doesn't leave our website all year. So our loyal fans will find that we, we mean what we say when we say we want them to be available. We keep producing this one. So at some point, it may be something that you see always on our website, easily obtained, because we're doing several thousand of them a year, and they're here. That's that's kind of the beauty about purchasing Buckholz Nursery, too, is Tim and I can focus on mass producing trees that no one else mass produces. And Mayday is one of those plants that we really need to mass produce because this thing rocks it out. It can give you some really good apricot colors in the early spring. Then it can go to like some blonde sort of blonde greens midsummer. It is a slower growing for a Makawa type as well. It is a unique color when it comes to a Makawa Yetabusa family collection. Love it. Mayday is hard to beat. I know this year we we probably grew close to a pound of seed off the original Mayday there at Buckholz Nursery. So who knows, maybe we'll be able to exceed what Mayday does. But until then, guys, it's the best yellow Macaw going. I love it. I love what it does. I love how it leaves out more pink and it gets more yellow. I've got some big ones in my garden. We've got plenty of stock plants around. We're actually sending stock plants back to Buckholz Nursery just to increase you know, the production rate on this one. It's one that didn't go anywhere with us for a long time. We'll be producing Mayday, and it, it's just always a hit. I mean, you know, don't get disheartened if it sells out. Because of this, we're able to keep up on those numbers so that it comes back in bigger numbers each time. Coming in at number six, we've got Acer Olive Random Hot Chicken. Now, a lot of people have been waiting on this. It's getting kind of crazy here at the top of the list. These are a lot of ones y'all been waiting on for a while. Hot Chicken's kind of a funny name. Miss Jody, actually, our office manager, put the name Hot Chicken on this one. It is a seedling that Tim and I collected at World Maple Park. So there is an Acer Livianum there in World Maple Park that throws a lot of hybrids. Yossi Oceano has over a thousand trees there at World Maple Park. And, uh, you know, he has Nakahara Benny A and Nakahara Benny B, which became Hot Sauce and Hot Tamale there in the park. Well, those were both collected from one Acer Livianum there in the park. So, we were there, and there was some seed on it, and of course, you know, we got to ask. So Tim's like, uh, Yano son, through our translator, may we collect some of the seed on your Acer Livianum? And he was so gracious to allow us to collect some seed. How many people were allowed ever to collect seed at Warm Maple Park? Not many. We, we, we have a snake bark that's variegated called Yano's Gift coming out, too, just as an honor to the late, great Masayoshi Yano. That, that, I've got a probably 15-foot one behind my shed now uh, that's just an awesome variegated snake bark we named after Yano as well from that trip. Hot chicken, kind of a goofy one. This one is kind of in that Koshi Minnow style, Hagaromo style growth, but it's a hybrid with Acer Livianum. So we like that it had that winged look to it. It kind of has those weird, you know, elongated feather like structures hanging off of it, but distinctly from Acer Livianum, has that kind of more uh, olive, evergreen kind of color that you think of with the species Acer Livianum. Heat tolerant as all get out. This one's going to be as heat tolerant as something like hot blonde, but give you a completely different leaf structure than anything that's ever been seen in Acer Livianum. And that's the fun thing about having the Heat Seeker series. We're starting to get more palmatum traits into Acer Oliveranum. And with this one specifically, you bring that angel feather leaf structure that is very special and unique. One of my favorite styles of leaf structures of any of the Japanese maples but you bring Acer Oliveranum's heat tolerance to that as well. And so it's a combination of a lot of amazing things and hot chicken that definitely falls in that heat seekers category. Man, they, we're marketing gurus over here, hot chicken. <laughs> How goofy are we? You know, people tell us we're gimmicky, but hot chicken, that's funny. I, I do love me some hot chicken, though. If you got some Nashville hot chicken, I will, I will drive to Nashville well, right the, now. To well, eat. the leaves look like little chicken wings. They do, they do. It's got an interesting look to it. You know, Jody said that, and we just all laughed, but it kind of stuck. Like, we all laughed at the name, but then we're like, I think that's it. So, I mean, it, it's a funny name, but uh, best hot chicken, Prince's Hot Chicken. Hard to beat Prince's Hot Chicken in Nashville. Coming in at number five, we've got Acer Shirasawanum 
Yellow canary. Another bird. Never ate one of those. No, I have not eaten one of those either. <laughs> we can take this one down a coal mine and see if it drops dead first. Yellow canary, another Talon Buckholtz introduction. We did offer this one briefly in 2023. It went very quickly. Uh, we did notice when we offered it that we had the majority of the stock plants here, not at the Buckholtz farm. So we couldn't list too many of them at once. We did hold off on uh, over selling out of this one so that we would be able to continue to produce it and offer it again. And because of that, it's coming back in 2024. A lot of people missed that one, and it's highly anticipated return will happen in 2024. This is one of the newer selections by Talon Buckholt. It's a little more vigorous. It's like a, a more vigorous Arium uh, with a little bit larger foliage as well. It has those large Acer Shira Solemn, uh, yellow leaves that everyone loves about like Arium, but it's a little bit larger on that foliage. Good vigorous tree. I mean, yellow canary, love the name. And we're producing the heck out of any of these. Anything on this list, we're going to try to offer 100 of them or more. I mean, we're, we're really trying to produce these at our highest rate possible. So if you don't hear your favorite tree ever, if somebody's like, they didn't say Tom and Nishke, it doesn't mean we'll never offer Tom and Nishke in 2024. It does mean it's probably not in as high numbers as some of these. So there'll be some surprises for sure. And it's to each individual collector. These are what we speculate will be the most anticipated based off request. So based off what you guys are asking us for, these are the top of the list. It is about to get heated. Now, Yellow Canary was number five. We've broken to that top five, y'all. I don't even know how it's this low. Number four, we got Acer Shirasawa and Magic Moon. That one might drop. That one is magical. I mean, that is an Acer Shirasawa. That's kind of like Purple Curl. I mean, that's the closest thing to it is Purple Curl because it has those funky contorted leaves and a weird malting to the foliage. Well, I like that the leaf is more regular, though. This one's going to have more traditional style Acer Shirasawa. You know, a lot of people compare those two, but I think they're distinctly different. You know, Talon List, Purple Curl's Palmatum, even though it may have some Shirasawa influence. I love how funky this one is. The Magic Moon just, it just brings it. I mean, sometimes it looks more Higashiyama. It definitely has that round leaf like an Acer Shirasawa in them. It, it reminds me of something, you know, like a, a golden full moon with just a lot more going on. You get that checkerboard going on. You get that crazy variegation, especially in the early spring. Man, I love when they're cupped. When they got that just ball look and they're just starting to unfurl, they can look so weird. Some purple veining going on in there. When we originally released this plant, we released it in three gallons. And unfortunately, we sold more than we should have. So it took a while to build this tree back up in numbers to really make another big release. Uh, We often say, well, we can't sell trees too early before we actually have them in numbers. We can't magic moon ourselves because that's exactly what we did with magic moon. Don't be mooning me, bro. (laughs) Is we sold too many before we actually had numbers build up to keep it in production. And we were much smaller when we first released magic moon. But now we've built it up in numbers where this next time we release it, we're going to have a good amount of numbers ready for this tree. When we make it available, a lot of people are going to be able to take this tree home and we're still going to be able to keep producing this to make it available each and every year. Yeah, we're going to be getting this one to the Buckholtz farm and getting it into production out there as well. So the numbers will only increase from here. Uh, I think it's one of the coolest Shira Solidums ever introduced. Uh, you know, I, I know we named it here, but I'm a huge fan of it. This actually came as a gift from Jonathan Savage. So Jonathan Savage, the guy who named Lillian's Jewel, we were texting back and forth, and he sent me this one as a gift. Uh, he said, I'm not going to be able to do anything with this one. Didn't know he was going to jail at the time. But, you know, he did send me this one before. He ended up going to prison for a little bit of time. And I was so glad that he did because it wasn't lost to the trade. He said, when you get this one, put a name on it. Let me know what you think about it. Man, great plant, and and we've been able to kind of produce this one. It's got a ton of hype around it, though. I mean, this is one that the hype meter's off the chain. I think it could even be up to number two on the hype meter. I know I know Alan LaFoe has personally been responsible for an incredible amount of hype on this. We called him the meme master for forever. Doug McDougal might be giving him a run for his money for the memes now. And uh, Mr. Maple Friends Group, those guys create some memes for their favorite trees. You know, there was a longest time where – Every single day I woke up to Alan LaFoe with, you know, a picture of Magic Johnson and, and then the moon guy from McDonald's back in the day where it was open later, you know, just some variation. Do you believe in magic? And then it would have the moon coming out. There was always some variation of a magic moon mean. And uh, yeah, the, the, you guys make a smile for sure. I actually ended up sending one as a gift just because I appreciated. I almost hated to end all of the memes, though. It was like, well, if I send him one, that's the end of the fun, right? So coming in at number three, we've made it all the way down to number three from number 20. We've got Acer Palmatum Kryptonite. 
And this one makes Superman weak in the knees, and it does me too. Like, this is a fun sport on Makawa. Probably my favorite variegated Makawa. It's just clean variegation. It's excellent. I love that it almost glows in my garden. I have it in a good bit of sun. Got two of them in the ground now. They're excellent looking plants. Uh, they just spread out and look amazing. The new growth is exceptional. They're they're very fresh looking, especially in the early spring. Now, it's one that you'll leaf out almost green in the spring, and then within the next three to four weeks, the variegation becomes more and more prominent. So a lot of people will get this one and go, I don't get all the hype the first week when it first leaves out. They go, it looks pretty green. Well, hang on, there's more, because it's going to get almost Manasato looking by, you know, like green on green Manasato by like early May, June. Like the color just keeps getting more intense. And this one does have a little more elongated foliage. It's not as wide as Makawi Etsubusa. It does have a unique fall color, though. The fall color can definitely give you some like light yellows to oranges in the fall, which is really exceptional for the fall color. It's done great in sun, surprisingly. I mean, I've only tested it mostly in Western North Carolina in full sun, but the durability has been off the charts for us. And I just like that this tree does have that u- unique Menino Sato style variegation, where it's the green on green with that longer foliage to it. It gives it something special in that Makawa uh, Yatsubusa styling foliage where it's tightly layered. I mean, it is outstanding, and it's one of the introductions from us here at the Area 51 collection at MrMaple.com. All right, Tim told me not to even put this next on the list. I did it anyway, y'all. Number two, we got Bloody Talons. This is a selection by Talon Buckholtz. This is from the Floral Wonder collection at our Buckholtz uh, nursery farm. And this thing is crazy. It's got long foliage that look like bloody talons. Everybody loves this because, like, you know, talons kind of fun anyway. I mean, he can be a little curmudgeon with some people. And, you know, it's like uh, people use the term bloody in France a lot. Well, this one's bloody talons. So it kind of sounds like it's just got a little attitude to it to begin with, doesn't it? It's like bloody talons tree. It's one of his last introductions ever. It's crazy, too, because it leaves out green. But then it gets these splotches of red along the outside of the leaf. So it looks like bloody talons. I mean, it looks like eagle claw talons covered in blood. It's really weird. It's very slow growing. Uh, One disclaimer on this one, the graft is always kind of bulbous. Like it always gets kind of a bulge at the graft. There's some uh, forms of this that have been around since the 90s at Buckholtz Nursery. So he's been grafting this one since the 90s. It's a small, compact tree. It's not one that's going to get very big. It kind of just makes a little round ball of talons. I mean, it makes these little claw-looking shapes. It's more clawed out than anything else I've ever seen. It looks more like claws than starfish. It looks more like claws than trompenberg. It looks like eagle talons with blood on them. And it does have that double meaning to it because it looks like this. It's introduction by Talon Buckholtz. And Talon Buckholtz, I mean, if you read his blog, he's a no holds bar kind of guy. He tells you, he tells you exactly what he thinks when it comes to a lot of things. And so it is an awesome plant because of that. I mean, the way this tree looks, the way this tree grows, it's a collector plant. And this is a heavily desired tree that we will be releasing on MrMaple.com in 2024. Oh, man. So we're all the way down to number one. Any guesses what number one could be? Coming in at number one for the most anticipated plants of 2024. Blood good. We've got blood good. <laughs> it's Red Panda, y'all. You know what the heck is up. Red Panda releasing in 2024. The Panda hype is off the off the charts. I, I worry that it can't even live up to all this hype. Like, you guys are wild. You guys, the, the Panda hype has taken on like a, a level of its own. I don't know that I've ever seen a Japanese maple in my entire career as hyped up as much as red panda. And I don't know if that's a good thing as the guy who named it. I'm like, geez, Louise people. Like it, it, it literally scares me. The fever pitch. It's like Beatles level. Like this one is Elvis. I don't know what has happened. It's got a great name. It is a great plant. Like the tree will be worthwhile in your garden. It is an exceptional. It is by far the best iteration of a red Makawa Yetsubusa form I've ever seen. I've compared it to 15 to 20 different forms of red Makawa. Love this tree. And, I was, that, and that was the best forms. I and mean, we grew thousands of yeah. Makawa seedlings and thousands of them have been red. And there's been 20 to 30 that we've put names on and just waited. And this rose to the top of the class every single time. It holds its color well, gives a good shade of red. 
for me, it is the best red Makawi at Sabusa. Now, it will go greener a little bit midsummer, but it has red flushes and new growth that come across it. It is by far the best red Makawa that's out there. But again, I do think the hype on this tree may be bigger than the tree itself. I mean, it is a phenomenal tree. It's the best red Makawa. I think it lives up to the hype, but the hype is going to disappoint some people because if I had a thousand of them, the hype has went insane. I think the tree itself lives up to the hype. Like the tree itself, no problem. People are going to get this. They're going to love it. They're going to love it. It's it, it's worth all the attention, but all the attention is going to make it sell out. So basically I'm going to make, say I put out a hundred of them. I'm going to make a hundred people happy and then I'm going to have a thousand people mad at me. That's where it's at on this one. So I kind of cringe a little bit when one's like this release. I think we're going to be able to exceed a hundred Red Pan is offered in 2024. But it, it will sell out quicker than Mayday did yeah. in five minutes. And that's the problem and the problem we face with these I've seen rap types. videos this week with, with Red Pan in it. <laughs> I've, seen, I've seen country videos. I've seen photoshops of Doug McDougal at open house with an actual Red Pan in his hand putting it into the cart. I've seen uh, Bruce Burton make uh, you know photoshops of Red Pandas doing things. It, like the hype on this one. Tim and I threw it in. We did a video uh, on our YouTube channel and it was... Uh, how to pot up your Japanese maples. It was basically like, don't over exceed your pot size. So go from a liner to a one, go from a liner, a one to a two or a three. Don't go from a one to like a 10 gallon. Cause it's much slower growth. When you do that, we were potting up trees in the greenhouse when we were doing that. And I just grabbed one of the liners that was right there. It happened to be red paint of what they were about to pot next. And so we talked about it in the video. We threw a couple photos out of it. And that was literally all we did to start the live train rolling. There were screenshots. I mean, don't get me wrong. I I sent out a Happy New Year's post that Sean made with a red pan in it. But if anything, I've tried to deter the hype level. The hype on this one, like I'm like, please don't show up at my house and beat me up. (laughs) I'm getting a little nervous about the red pandas at this point. Uh, we were actually how it got its name. I, I had the tree in my in my garden in my Makawa collection. We were evaluating it, and I was at the WNC Nature Center, and they have an exhibit of red pandas, and they're just the cutest stinking things you've ever seen. If you've ever seen a real red panda, like they're adorable animals. My my daughters love them. They they just are animated. They're they're fun characters, and uh, I was told the other name that the other day that all my trees are either named after people. Like terms like hot blonde, gold digger, (laughs) daddy's girl. I'm always naming it after somebody like that. It's always a person, a type of person, or like an animal. Those are the only two things. Somebody was telling me they would name all their people, all their trees after food. There was a McGriddle suggested by Jason Michael Skaggs. (laughs) I don't know if we're going to have an Ace or probably a McGriddle. We do have hot chicken. We do have hot chicken. We do have hot chicken. A lot of my trees end up being animal names, though. That, That is something that's a reoccurring trend with me for sure. And red panda, it's it's a plant that I think you're going to love when you get it and put it in your garden. It is outstanding on its colors, and it's the best form of red macaw that I've ever seen. And with all the hype that it's been, it is the most anticipated tree of 2024. I mean, maybe of all time. <laughs> maybe <laughs> of all time. Like this, the, the hype, y'all, y'all crack me up, though. It's a, If you want to see some fun stuff, go to Mr. Maple Friends on Facebook you know, put put in hashtag free the panda. Put team, in, free, team free the panda. Team free the panda. Put in red panda in the search engine. You guys are going to see rap videos. You're going to see pandas thugged out. You're going to see country pandas. You're going to see more red pandas than you can possibly imagine. I mean, it's the number one response in half our chats. We're we're sitting there in the chat, and it's like number one. And they're like it's red panda. <laughs> it's like it's a whole life of its own. It's like a punchline now with a lot of our customers. But we, it actually does exist. There actually is a real red panda, and it is coming in 2024. And we almost released it in 2023, but with all the hype happening, we had to use the plants that we had for more signwood to make the first release of it. You guys are your own worst enemies. You keep hyping it up, and then I go, we're going to need more. We're going to need more. People are so fever-pitched about this. We're going to need more. And so it's it's a, a victim of its own success there on the hype train because... The more uh, hype there is on it, the more plants we need to offer. And it's one that you're going to see on Mr. Maple for years to come. We're going to continue to offer Red Panda. I do think the name is whimsical and fun, and it kind of captures what this tree is. And it is a good name for what it is. I think people are going to really enjoy the color pattern on it. Um, I I absolutely love the plant, and I think it's going to be a great addition to Japanese maples as it gets out there. I hope you've enjoyed today's list of the top 20 most anticipated Japanese maples that will and should be released 
in 2024. Let us know your favorite tree that wasn't on the list that you'd like to see. Let us know if you thought Red Panda was number one. I, I guarantee you the second this started the chat, it was just panda emojis just, just <laughs> flowing. They, they put up a red dot and a panda emoji and they're just... I mean, some of the time, sometimes I'll just post something in our Facebook group that has nothing. It'll be like, check out our walk through Wednesday and it'll just be like a ton of panda emojis. <laughs> it's, it's like, what is going on? Well, thank you all so much. Take care. God bless. And have a great day.